Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we are talking about an interesting topic, stability. What is stability? Stability is a natural demand for control systems. Yeah? We want, if we want to change the control variable from one value to another value, yeah? we want to have a transition. And this transition shall be stable. This means we should get from one value to the other value without reaching some ridiculous areas where it's not safe anymore. Yeah? So we should stay inside the system safety limits, yeah? allowed limits, permitted limits. And of course, the transition, it shall then reach at some point in time, reach and stay at the new desired value, at the new reference variable value. And not swing around, not and not go there and then grow to infinity or something like this. This means stability. Stability means reaching one state from another state. Yeah? So one state from another state in a transition, which where the the, the, the error will decrease over time. That's it. Yeah? So we're talking about stability. To do so, yeah, we have a closer look at our transfer function. And we will do it with our uh, reference variable transfer function. Remember the reference variable transfer function, fw from s, yeah, was the regulator transfer function, the controller transfer function, multiplied by the system transfer function, divided by 1 plus controller transfer function, system transfer function, this was. This is what we've calculated some videos ago. Okay. So, in a linear time invariant system, these are two, two polynomes. Uh, so, there is one polynome in the numerator, uh, I will call it I will write simply one down, bm sm plus bm minus 1 multiplied by sm minus 1 plus and so on. And then at the other side we have b1 s plus b0. So this is the numerator polynomial divided by and now down here I have the denominator polynomial yeah, and I will write it that way Sn plus An minus 1 Sn minus 1 plus An minus 2 Sn minus 2 plus ba, 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 A1s plus a0. Uh, here I have no leading leading number coefficient because I simply divided all of this. It would just change it. Uh, but these are this is a possible representation of a linear time invariant system. We said it's always something like this, polynomes, two polynomes. Uh, so we have a polynome here divided by a polynomial in the denominator. Yeah. Why use those indices? Yeah, because simply in my script they are used like this. Because the numerator in German it's called Zähler yeah, and the denominator in German it's called Nenner. Yeah. And this is why PZ, Zähler polynom and Nenner polynom. In the end it's just names, two polynomes. Yeah. Not to confuse my pupils that they see here other indices than in my script. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Yeah? What is interesting? Yeah? Interesting usually is where those transfer functions I have unusual high values, let's say. Yeah? If this is small, this just means the, the reference variable is transferred poorly to the controlled variable. If this is very high, 
it means, well, a small change in reference variable will cause a big change in the control variable. This smells a little bit like instability. So interesting are the points where this is getting very high. Yeah? And now, since we have two polynomes, a polynome usually does have uh, zero points. Uh, so there is some s uh, where this whole term, this whole polynome reaches the value of zero. If this is in the numerator, well, then we don't have any transfer. If this happens in the, in the denominator, whew, yeah, we might end up in a very high value here. Yeah? So what we are interested in are the zero points of the numerator polynome. Okay, this means the numerator polynome, Pn, which is this, I can also write it like uh, P1 minus S multiplied by P2 minus S multiplied by P3 minus S multiplied pa, 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 up to Pn minus S. Uh, usually we have an nth grade polynome. Yeah? So we have n different uh, zero points. If I take, look, use it like this, I can make a partial fraction decomposition, decomposition, and a Partialbruchzerlegung in German. Yeah? And my transfer function here, my FW, would look like this. Yeah? So I have a coefficient C1 divided by P1 minus S. Okay? Then I have a coefficient C2 divided by P2 minus S. Then I have a coefficient C3 divided by P3 minus S. Plus and so on, I have a coefficient Cn uh, divided by Pn minus S. Right. This is simply another representation of here. Yeah? But now yeah, we can clearly see whenever one of these is getting, whenever S is getting one of these P's, yeah, I call them P's because these are pole points, yeah, the zero points of the, of the denominator causes a pole in the whole fraction. Yeah, so pole points is called. When something is undefined high, it's a pole. And yeah, this means one of these terms might get into infinity. And if we transfer this to, uh, to time area, yeah, we would reach something like this. There is C1 multiplied by e raised by the power of P1t yeah, plus C2 e raised by the power of P2t plus C3 e raised by the power by P3t plus and so on plus Cn e raised by the power of Pnt. Okay, so here at this e's I have always this pole point. If we look at that term e raised by the power of something, if this something is bigger than zero, yeah, it will grow to infinity. And this is the time, yeah? this is the time area. So if something is growing over time to infinity, this sounds not like stable, and this is exactly what it is. So, so if these p's are positive, if one of these p's, doesn't really matter which term is getting high, huh? infinite, huh? with one or more, or uh, it doesn't really, one, one infinite is enough. <laughs> yeah? So if one of these p's of the zero points of the denominator polynomial, is positive, the real part is positive, yeah? then hmm, instable. If all of them are negative, yeah, then this will, this, if this is P1 is negative, then this will decrease over time, will get smaller. Okay? So, this is the stability rule. Yeah? Let's have a look 
at the imaginary area huh? real axis imaginary axis this means if we have if we draw in the pole points yeah, so the zero points of the nominator if they are left of the imaginary axis so in this area here somewhere yeah this is the stable area this is okay here we are stable in this area yeah we are not stable we are instable <laughs> okay so whenever the real part of the of the pole point is in the right side it's instable okay. Simply because then one of these terms will grow to infinity. That's it. If we have these this, this points, yeah, these zero points of a polynomial, this might be on the real axis. Yeah? So we could have one here, for instance. This is stable. Yeah? This is stable. This, this especially one would look like this. If we have a transition to this value, yeah. If we have a transition to this value, we will change without swinging to here. Yeah? Here I will use the same real part. Yeah? If there also might be double poles, yeah, so symmetrical to the real axis, yeah, so it might be here and here. This might also be one pole position. These ones yeah, would look like this. Here is the value. Yeah. And we reach it, swing a little bit, and that's it. Yeah. The swing will disappear over time. Yeah. This is these double points. This is this. And the further we get away from the real axis, so if we have somewhere here, yeah, double pole, it would simply look like this. Yeah. Pretty much the same. So since we have a certain amount in real, yeah, this will disappear as fast as before, so it will look like this. Yeah. However, with a different frequency, with a higher frequency. So we will simply swing a little bit more, but the disappearance will be the same because the real part is the same. If the imaginary part is getting higher, the frequency of this disappearing swinging is getting higher. Okay. Now, let's have a look at here. If we have a pole point here, then this would look like here we want to go yeah? and we simply simply exceed Ooh. Bah, go somewhere yeah? now if I'm using the same real part so all instable and let's have a look also what happens if we are if we have symmetrical poles yeah? so like here zack 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 yeah? then here we want to go then I have some swinging and this swinging might be small at the beginning and then it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger yeah? so exactly the opposite of this yeah? Woo. Get it growing. Swing is growing, not stable, simply. Yeah. So this 
this, this is this. And we are further away, still further away. Then, then we have exactly the same increase of the swing, yeah. However, with a higher frequency. So we are okay, getting it swinging more, yeah? but the increase of the swing will also stay that way. Yeah? So these are these parts. Also, draw it here. What happens if one pole is exactly at zero? Well, this is a border case. Yeah? It's only allowed with one pole. Yeah? If one pole is here, for instance, it's not what we call stability. Yeah? However, it would look like this. Would look like this. Simple grow. Yeah? Linear grow. If this is zero, yeah? then this is always one and we will grow. Yeah? If we are further outside here, yeah? then it would look like this. We would have a certain swing, which is not disappearing, staying constant. Okay. If we are out here, it happens exactly the same thing as the as before. We would also have a certain swinging, yeah? but with higher frequency simply. Yeah? And it will not disappear and will not will not disappear and will not increase over time. It will stay constant. Yeah? So this is how we can discuss stability. Yeah? So stable. Stable means all P, X have a real part which is smaller than zero. Yeah. Instable. At least one PX has a real part which is bigger than zero. Okay? At least one PX has a real part which is bigger than zero. Yeah? And we have the border case. Yeah. One single pole, one single PX is located at the imaginary axis. If it's two, it's already unstable. Yeah. These are the rules. Yeah. So you just have to calculate the zero points of an nth grade polynome and you know if this thing is stable. Calculate <laughs> the zero points of an nth grade polynome is not that easy. With nowadays computers, it is, of course. Now this computer is this. Uh, however, there are some criteria, yeah, because there were not always computers around, and their control system are around very long. Yeah? 
and this control system theory. So the control engineers looked closely at those parts and made some rules. Yeah. And I will now tell you two of the rules. Yeah. Just get grab a new a new sheet of paper. Yeah, and then I will explain two of these rules. And a third, more important one, will be handled in a separate video. So remove this, yeah, fresh sheet of paper, then we go on. So what are now the stability criteria where I was talking about? That we do not have to calculate the zero points of the denominator non polynome. Yeah? I will write down the denominator polynome once again. So there is a PN, yeah, and I will write it slightly different. I just turn it around. So there is there is an A0 yeah, plus A1S plus A2S squared and so on, yeah, plus AN minus 1, S minus 1 plus SN. This is the denominator. And one stability criteria is that all those coefficients, uh, they are there. Uh, and they have the same sign. Then the system might be stable. Uh, as it might be stable. If these criteria are not met, if one if one coefficient is missing or is a change of sign, then it's instable for sure. Yeah? If they're all there and have the same sign, it doesn't really mean it's stable. Yeah? It means it might be stable. Yeah? So you understand the difference? Yeah? One thing is that this is, this is instable for sure. And the other thing is that it might be stable. Yeah? So it's yeah a, a simple criteria for instability it's more an instability criteria and there is a second criteria the so-called hurwitz criteria yeah hurwitz adolf hurwitz this was an, an german mathematician yeah there and now it comes there it's it looks a little bit esoterical. Yeah? There is a mathematical background. Hurwitz was a brilliant mathematician. Yeah? Hurwitz criteria. I just show you how this is working. Yeah? We are writing down those coefficients, as many as there are, yeah? in a certain pattern. Yeah? And call this, this the Hurwitz matrix. Yeah? So we're writing a0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7. I think you got the pattern, right? Next two lines, 0, 0. And then I'll start over here again. A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Next two lines, 0, 0, 0, 0, and start over. A0, A1, A2, A3, and so on. Okay, simply how many coefficients I would need yeah? at some point in time, and as is, is some value. Yeah? So this is the so-called Hurwitz matrix. And now I have to calculate the the coefficients, uh, the, not the coefficients, the the determinants. Okay, the determinants of all possible areas up. Yeah? So there's an H zero. This is the dependent of 1. Yeah? This must be bigger than 0 to reach stability. Then there is an H1. 
which is the determinant of a1, a3, a0, a2, this one. Huh? Always, always more. Huh? Puck, 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 puck. This has to be bigger than zero. There is h2, huh? the next one. a1, a0, 0, a3, a2, a1, a5, a4, a3. Bigger than zero. And so on. This is the Hurwitz criteria. If all of those Hurwitz determinants are bigger than zero, this thing is stable. Pooh. More. I have to calculate simply all. So if there is a system, I don't know, second order, I only have a2. Eh? So a3 is already zero. They are not use coefficients are zero. Eh? So I will stop here. Because here this makes no sense because this is everything is zero here. Yeah, this will be zero for sure. Eh? So I will I can stop here at this at this condition. Eh? Who its criteria? All of the determinants needs to be bigger than zero. Then we are fine. This now it sounds now really a little bit yeah mystical. Eh? We write the, the coefficients of a polynome in some certain pattern, and the polynome is not even the full transfer function, if you remember this, yeah, there was the full transfer function, the polynome is only the de denominator part, and I take this and calculate some determinants from, from matrix and, 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 and say this is stable. Uh, this is really not that, you know, understandable. Uh, like I said, there are reasons for this and so on, but this would be would simply go much too far for us. Eh? You should know the Hurwitz criteria, you should be able to use it, eh? and well, the math behind, accept it. <laughs> or you can look it up eh? if you like. Yeah, interesting is that the stability is really only just because of the of the denominator zero points. Eh? The zero points of the of the numerator they don't have an effect. However, the zero points here they affect these C1, C2, C3, these, these parts. Yeah? If you have this uh, separated into into these partials, partial fractions, then you know these C's they are affected by this by this polynome here. Yeah? This means it somehow shows how effective a term is. Yeah? You know, if if one instable term is in here and the C3 is very, very small, yeah, which can be caused by this upper polynome, yeah? then it might hit us later, but it will hit us. Yeah? This just means how, how weighted the, the terms are. Uh, this is coded, let's say, in in the numerator polynome. The denominator polynome, there is stability. In the, the, in the numerator polynome, there is written how severe or how fast this instability will hit us. Yeah? Possible instability. Yeah, And like I said, if we don't want to calculate the zero points or the pole, the pole points, then we could use of these criteria. Eh? Next time we are talking about a different criteria. Next time we are talking about a criteria which is much more understandable than the Hurwitz criteria. Eh? Next time we are talking about the Nyquist criteria. Eh? I will explain this Nyquist criteria in detail because it's simply that understandable. Eh? It's, you will see this something else. It's less mystical than the Hurwitz criteria.
Uh, it's more, it's easier to understand. But we'll be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.